evening Bible study, and we are hoping that you're tuned in uh, with the Spirit of God and ears open to what He would say to us from His Word uh, today. We thank you for coming on and sharing with us in the Word of God, because we know that uh, God's Word is real, and when everything else is gone, His Word is still going to be standing. So we're hoping and praying that you tuned in with us as we uh, share in God's Word this evening. Okay, without further ado, you know that we're praying. We're praying for all of you, those that are online, those that are offline, those that have a line. <laughs> we're praying for you this evening because we know that uh, we're living in a time of uh, uh, grave prayer. So uh, we ask that you pray for me. Pray for me and my family as well. All right. Uh, we're going to read some scripture from uh, 2 Kings chapter 23 this evening. 2 Kings cap chapter 23. Uh, we'll read verse 3 and then verse 21 through 25. But uh, this entire chapter is relative to what I think I want to talk about this evening, but uh, let's read some scripture. The king um, took his place of authority beside the pillow and renewed the covenant in the Lord's presence. This is from 2 Kings chapter 23, verses 3, then 21 through 25, okay? Whole, whole uh, chapters relative to what I want to share. But uh, right now, just 2 Kings 23 and verse 3, and then 21 through 25. Okay, but, uh, back, starting over again. The king took his place of authority beside the pillar and renewed the covenant in the Lord's presence. He pledged to uh, obedience to the Lord in keeping all of his commands, laws, and decrees with all his heart and soul. In this way, he confirmed all the terms of the covenant that were written in the scroll. And all the people, all the people, uh, pledged themselves to the covenant. Verse 21, King Josiah then issued this order to all the people. You must celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God as required in this book of the covenant. There had not been a Passover celebration like that since the time when the judges ruled in Israel, nor throughout all the years of the kings of Israel and Judah. But in the 18th year of King Josiah's reign, this Passover was celebrated to the Lord in Jerusalem. Josiah also got rid of the mediums and psychics the household gods, the idols, and every kind of detestable practice, both in Jerusalem and throughout the land of Judah. He did this in obedience to the laws written in the scroll that Hilkiah the priest had found in the Lord's temple. <clears throat> Pardon me. Never before had there been a king like Josiah who, who turned to the Lord with all his heart and soul and strength, obeying all the laws of Moses, and there has never been a king like him since. Let's pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all the blessings of this day. We acknowledge your sovereignty. We acknowledge, God, that you are the ruler of this universe, yea, our very lives. We ask, O oh God, that you would uh, guide our thoughts right now, our hearts, our minds. Speak through these lips of clay, Lord, that uh, these who are tuned in might hear a word from you this evening. And even those who may tune in at a later date, Lord, may still experience the Spirit, experience the power and your Holy Spirit, and be moved toward a closer walk with you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are and for the relationship we have with you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. All right. 
Let's go. Let's go to the word of God. And, and as I start this evening, I want to uh, ask you a series of questions. Just something for you to peruse as you think about what was happening in this text that uh, Josiah uh, uh, records for us, so to speak, from the book of Second Kings. But I just want to ask you a series of questions, series of questions that will cause you to think about what's uh, being said in this text and what I think the Spirit of God is trying to say to us uh, this evening. Uh, and the first question is, where are you in your walk with the Lord today? Are you satisfied with how your relationship with God uh, is? Have you set a goal or have you decided there are some things or something you want to accomplish this year in your spiritual growth? All right, that's, that's some questions I want you to peruse and think about as we go through this text. And I'm sure that uh, most of you can agree that there are some things that can be done better this year than uh, was performed last year or done last year. Are you willing to take a closer examination of yourself? That may be a better uh, a question that compiles everything that I'm really saying. Are you willing to, t willing to take a closer examination of yourself and make a truthful assessment of where you are with God? That, that's, you know, and I think that's something that we, we, we need to do periodically not just at the beginning of a year or end of a year, but it's something that we need to do on a regular basis. We just need to take a look at, you know, where we are in our walk and in our relationship with God, you know, because it's just like all the other relationships. I mean, relationships can, can sour if we don't do what we need to do in order to keep uh, as someone said, the fire burning, uh, keep the spirit alive in that relationship, okay? They can all wane and they can all go sour. So we need to make sure that our relationship is with God is, uh, you know, is where it, it should be. It's where God would have it be. I'm, and I'm not talking about being perfect either, okay? We're just talking about examining yourself and making it truthful, as, as, as assessment of where you are in your relationship with him because we know that there's room for improvement for all of us. The hymn writer said in one of his stanzas, have you found yourself drifting away from the love relationship you have or that you have had in the past with the Lord as a, you know, and, and paraphrasing it, uh, I would ask the question, has the fire that was burned uh, with compassion in your heart for Christ grown cold. So God's message for us this evening is that new beginnings are possible. That's what we're wanting to glean from this uh, passage and this text here in uh, 2 Kings chapter 23, that uh, new beginnings can begin in relationships, okay? in any relationship, okay? I'm primarily thinking about the relationship between our Heavenly Father, between our Savior, okay? But between our comfort, our keeper, our guide, the Holy Spirit, okay? But, uh, you know, it could be physical relationships, you know? Uh, new beginnings can begin. So, looking at the text, we see that just like in the time of Josiah, king of Judah, first of all, God, we know, longs to draw his wayward creation and his wayward children back home. God longs to stroke the flames of our hearts with revival. And I've been saying this throughout this pandemic, you know, either God is going to revive us and revive his church or he's just going to come back and get us. <laughs> I 
believe that. All right? This, is, this has been one devastating experience for me, and I'm sure many others that's on the face of this earth, uh, what we've gone through in the last year or so. Uh, and, and I believe God is really speaking to his creation and to his, uh, his children, all right? Uh, backsliders in particular, <laughs> as the saying is. But Paul writes in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, Paul writes this, and he writes it to believers. He says, wherefore I put thee in remembrance, 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 9. He says, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of me the, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who have saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, he says, but according to his own purpose. There it is. God created us for his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Every, every time I read this passage of scripture, and Paul talks about uh, putting uh, uh, Timothy in remembrance of stirring up the gift uh, that began with putting on his hands, and in uh, another passage he's talked about uh, that started first of all with uh, with his mother, and, uh, first of all with his grandmother and his mother Eunice. I think about uh, my own grandmother and the impact she, she had on me as a baby, as a child. I had no idea what was happening at that time, but uh, that's where our Timothy's life started. His life with Christ started with, with his grandmother and with his mother. And of course, Paul later on uh, had great influence on his life. But anyway, this is the passage that tells us what we need to do when we grow cold for the Lord. He said, Paul said, you need to stir up the gift of God, which is in you. Stir it up, stir it up, he said, by the putting of my hands, okay? Uh, and on and on he goes. But uh, anyway, in this narrative of revival, I, I want us to look at last at the last of the revivals that swept the nation of Judah and ask ourselves one last time, why, why, why then? Why was the revival occurring then in the nation of Judah? You know, why did God allow this pandemic to hit us at the time that it did in the 20? Uh, first century. What did these people do that led to renewed, that caused renewed fellowship with God? Well, the answer I believe is key to us if we wish to re experience revival in this present tense. Or, or now, is what I'm saying, during the pandemic or after the pandemic. You know, the first answer is that in this text of scripture that we read, it started in verse three. It, 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 it refers to or pertains to their renewed promise. They had a renewed promise to serve God. They renewed their promise to serve God. Verse three said the king stood by the pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commands, regulations, and decrees with all of his heart and all of his soul, thus confirming the words of the covenant written in this book. Then all the people pledged themselves to the covenant. All the people pledged themselves to the covenant of the book. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? That was the first thing they did. They renewed their promise to the word of God. All right? Now, I'm saying that if we... If we really don't uh, get anything out of this pandemic, so to speak, 
uh, in terms of what we have uh, been experiencing, if we don't get it, if we go back the same way we came out, we're going to be, as some people say, of most people, most of all people, most miserable. All right? Because the world, the world is going to get theirs. You can believe that. The world is going to modify. But uh, is, is the church going to modify? Are believers going to modify? Are we going to try to listen to what God has been saying to us, okay, and make some adjustments in our lives? Yes, this is a time for revival for the church. I mean, real revival, not just, you know, calling in a preacher and he preaches for a few days and we go back to doing the same things we were doing over uh, before. No, but I'm talking about real revival, a revival initiated by God, created by God for the purpose of God. And if we miss this, as I say, of all people, we're going to be most miserable because the world is going to get theirs. Yes, the world is going to make some changes. You can believe that. And so should the, so should the church. All right. So the first thing the people of God did toward uh, a revival was they renewed their promise. They took a stand. Amen? Yeah, they took a stand. They said, look, we've been going in the wrong direction, but right here, right now, we're going back, okay? We're going back, and we're going to get on the right track. We've been, we, 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 we're renewing our covenant with the Lord. We will follow him and we will serve him. Remind me of what uh, uh, jo Joshua said when he spoke to the people. He said, I don't know what you all are going to do, but as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. What about you? What about you? Are you, gonna, are you going to uh, be tutored by the Holy Spirit uh, through this pandemic to the extent that when it's all over, you're going to come out, okay, ready to operate on, 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 on the basis of a renewed spirit, new renewed promise. You're going to be in the renewed revival. Uh, God, has God been tugging at your heart? Are you ready to come home like the prodigal son, okay? Has God been speaking to you about your waywardness? waywardness? It all begins with a new commit, a new beginning. A, a renew, renewal of your covenant. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean you're being resaved. I'm not talking about that right now. But Josiah and the people weren't saved. We haven't been, uh, uh, we, 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 uh, we, we, say we haven't been your people, but now we want to begin again. No, they were saying we haven't lived up to our end of the bargain, but from this point forward, with your help, we're going to act like the people of God you really want us to be. And we want to come home. We want to come home obedient to your word. And so they renewed that promise. But the next thing they did as they moved toward revival is they remembered God's providence. That's in verse 21. Okay, right here, right here in the book. If, you, if you're looking at the text, it's right here. It says, the king gave this order to all the people. Celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God as it is written in, in this book of the covenant. This is the first time, according to this text, this is the first time Passover was celebrated since before the time of David. The Passover was all about remembering God's help in ages past. Okay, it was all about recalling God's saving deeds for his people. Started when they left Egypt. You remember that. God told his people to kill a lamb without spot or blemish. Take the blood from that lamb. Put it on the lentil post uh, because the deaf angel was going to uh, be dispatched into the land. And that God would send uh, of the deaf angels that throughout the land of Egypt. Wherever he saw the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, the deaf angel would pass over that particular house. But if the, no blood was seen, the deaf angel had instruction
from God to kill the firstborn of that home. And so there was a great cry in the land of Egypt, but that was also when Pharaoh finally decided to re release the children of God from slavery. They had been in slavery 430 years. As I was thinking about this passage and looking at this text, I said to myself, I wonder what God is going to have to do in America to cause uh, the dominant race to really, uh, you know, set us free according to the Constitution of the United States that all men are created equal in the sight of God. And, you know, as long as this uh, systemic racism goes on, that uh, particular aspect of the Constitution has not been realized. And so I'm wondering, what is God going to have to do in the land uh, to cause this people to truly free us up? Well, it was the death of the firstborn in Egypt. <laughs> And that's what the children of Israel was to celebrate. That's what the Passover was all about. And, and those of you that know the word, those of you that have been around church in amount of time, you know that passage well, and you know what it's all about. The significance of this act is the role it has in helping to renew the faith of the people of God. The God who miraculously... Uh, 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 working on their behalf in the past, delivered them from their enemies. And God expected them at this point to really remember him, all right? Remember what he had done for them. And that's what, the, uh, the, the, you know, of course, now we don't celebrate Passover. We celebrate communion, all right? And communion is, is really offshoot from the Passover. Well, they had to kill a lamb without spot or a blemish, okay? And that lamb was a type of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ had no spot, wrinkle, blemish, well, other words, no sin. Jesus had no sin. And it was his blood that covered us and set us free, washed us from all of our sins. And so the work of Christ that was necessary to pay for our sins, A, is something to be remembered, even as the Passover, but also to uh, remember God's saving work in a personal way. Jesus died for all mankind, for God so loved the world, but he died for us individually. It's a personal work, and we need to take personal responsibility uh, toward our relationship with him and in serving him. We need to remember how God brought us to faith and the things that he's done in our lives. We, we have a need to recount that story to others as a ritual of remembrance. We need to tell others of the goodness, grace, and mercy of God that we have experienced individually. Okay? Remember the uh, the the man in the Gospels uh, that Jesus uh, healed, the man with all those demons, and when God set him free, that was the man that they wrapped in chains and he couldn't, they, the chains couldn't keep him, and he ended up living in the cemetery. Okay, remember that uh, uh, that narrative in the Gospels, and when God through Christ finally set him free, he told him, says, "Go home." Go home and tell others of what great things uh, God has done for you. In other words, when God sets us free, we have the obligation to tell somebody else, okay, that God is able to set you free. God is able to deliver you. God is able to uh, build you up, okay? God is able to plant your feet on solid rock. Yes, he is. And so revival starts, first of all, with a renewed uh, promise that you're going to keep God's word, okay? And then secondly, uh, with a renewed commitment to go back 
to do the things that uh, 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 God has told us to do initially when we got saved. So secondly, that yeah, they remembered God's providence. They remembered what God had done for them. That was a commitment to make. God, we remember where you brought us from. We're going to remember what you did for us. Somebody needs to remember where God brought you from. You haven't always been where you are right now. You haven't always enjoyed the blessings that you're enjoying right now. You know, you some of you've been set free. I mean, sure enough, set free for all kind of vice and sin. God loosed you and let you go free. And you started praising him. But then after, you know, uh, you've been out there a while, you tend to forget. But you need to go back and remember. Like I say, we don't learn anything that God has sought to teach us uh, from this pandemic. We're going to be a terrible people when we go back. We're going to be worse than when we went into this thing. If we don't learn, like I say, I don't even think God's going to tolerate us really anymore, to tell you the truth. If we don't, this is like, uh, you know, the last straw to me. God has gone to the ultimate end to try to get his people to do what we should be doing. And as Peter said, it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is trying to bring his creation back to himself. And so I hope we as a people of God will learn from this experience uh, uh, because the world is going to learn, not to the glory of God, but they're going to learn. All right, and they're going to definitely make some modifications. Yeah, they'll modify a lot of things. But it said, Josiah said, the Bible said in verse 24, Josiah, the, the king, got rid of the mediums, the spiritists, the household gods, the idols, and all the other detestable things seen, seen in Judah and Jerusalem. This he did to fulfill the requirements of the law written in the book that Hilkiah, the priest, had discovered in the temple of the Lord. That's verse 24, okay? He said, this he did to fulfill the requirements of the law written in the book of Hilkiah, the priest, and, and, and that he had discovered in the temple of the Lord. This, of course, is that is a repentant theme which we have seen in every one of these uh, 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 and everyone in the books of the Bible tell you the truth, we always see the theme of repentance when God is trying to bring people back to himself. Okay? But uh, it's a part uh, and it's a part of the revival story if we were to get back to God. Re without repentance, there is no revival. Or perhaps it's the other way around. <laughs> Without revival, where there is no without repentance, there is no, no, no revival. Without revival, there is no real repentance. But the danger, of course, is that we might be tempted to believe that God's blessings, even our salvation, are dependent upon our behavior, or somehow a reward for right living. No, no, no. In response to that kind of thinking, I think Oswald Chambers wrote one time. It's not repentance that saves me or saves us. Repentance is the sign that I realize what God has done in Christ Jesus. It is my obedience that puts me in right relationship with God. Never I am put right with God because uh, prior to all else, Christ, by the miracle of God's grace, I stand justified not because of anything I have done. Listen to me, beloved. But because of what Jesus has done, sinful men and women can be changed into new creatures, into new creations. Isn't that what, uh, isn't that what 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, or 1 Corinthians chapter 5 said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, okay? Old things pass away, behold, all things become new. And that's not because of what we've done, but it's because of what Christ, Christ has done for us. And that changes evidence in repentance. When you repent, 
you got to turn. You got to turn. You've got to turn from what you've been doing. And a key ingredient of any revival is turning. You got to make a change. You got to make a change. And change suggests that growth has taken place. And when growth has taken place, you experience improvement. As I said when I started this little, this little Bible study, that if you want to improve yourself in this coming year, you're going to have to make some changes, okay? If you want to grow, you're going to make the changes. But the final thing I know uh, that's uh, clearly a part of revival, uh, and, and remember the kind of revival that I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. Remember the kind of revival I'm talking about. I'm talking about turning back to God, not because of what some preacher says or has done, but because you believe God is speaking to you, okay? And, and, and if you don't think he has been speaking to you, then you must be living uh, in another world, because in this world, God has been speaking, and he has been speaking loud and clear, all right? And those of you who are not listening is because you're like an ostrich, you're burying your head in the sand, closing your ears, stopping up your ears uh, the way uh, some uh, did, okay, when God spoke in times past. All right, so, but the last th thing I want to say about this revival that Josiah initiated and started in the Word here in 2 Kings chapter 23 is... Uh, not only did he renew his promise, not only did he renew his commitment, uh, and, and not only did he make a, a change in terms of uh, uh, how, how God had been working with them and how he was going to work with them, maybe I should say, but he reform they reformed their practices, okay? They reformed their practices, and that's that's important. They reformed their practice. In other words, the things that they had been doing wasn't really what God wanted them to do. They were primarily doing what they wanted to do. They were going through the motion, but it wasn't the motion that God wanted them to go through. And I think if we don't know God has spoken to us during this pandemic, then I don't know what else God's going to have to do. But lastly, uh, he rekindled uh, they rekindled their passion. Passion. They rekindled their passion. Verse 25. Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did with all of his heart and with all of his soul and with all of his strength in accordance with all the law of Moses, okay? Josiah, the scripture is careful to note, was passionate in his devotion to the Lord. One of the undeniable features of revival is that God's people get passionate about serving him, and they serve him with all their heart, soul, and strength. You know, there, there is a difference. I mean, you can go through the motions of serving God. You can do all the things that appear to be what God would have you to do. But if your heart is not in it, and if you're not doing it with the right motive, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, all of your works are going to be burned up right before the presence of God. Now, it talks about our works, not talking about our salvation, but it talks about our works. You ought to read that sometime. You ought to read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, the first few verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And it talks about when we stand before God, he says, uh, you're going to be saved. But your works, you know, he's going to be tried. He said, anything that's not pure, that's not pure gold, 
if it's wood, stubble, hay, you know, uh, uh, um, type of uh, element that's not sufficient, okay, to stand under the uh, under the uh, judgment of God, then you know it's going to be burned up right before your very eyes. All right. And so it's something to think about how we serve God. I mean, when you're just serving him to, for other people to see you and you're just serving him to make a name for yourself. When Jeremiah says, you know, uh, God said, I'm not going to share my glory with nobody. You know, if you're doing it to, to, for, to, for you, to be seen yourself or to have somebody say about something, about you as a person, you know, it's just not going to cut it with the Lord. It's got to be from a pure heart, and it's got to be about serving God, understanding that God will share his glory, and God is expecting, you know, us to do what we do. Hey, Talana, God bless your daughter. Uh, God expects us to do what we do because of him, not because of her, us. And so when we understand what Christ has done for us, we can't help but be filled with an inexpressible joy, you know? And when you really don't have joy, you don't understand what Jesus has done for you. You know what I mean? I mean, some people, when we were in church, would just sit there with their arms folded and never had anything to say. They would never clap their hands. Good evening, Mother Bats. Uh, they would never clap their hands. They would never stand. They would never praise. And I mean, we're not to judge people. We know that. We are nobody's judge. Judging is for God. But you, you can't help but to wonder, do they really know Jesus as Savior? Do they? Hey, Sister Ethel Malone Bats, good evening to you. Uh, do they really understand what Jesus has done? Do, does they understand, do they understand the sacrifice that they have paid? And I declare when you really understand that, you'll have a joy that's inexpressible. You'll have a joy that's past, surpassing uh, all explanation. You have peace that is uh, beyond explanation. Okay, but that only comes when you really understand who Jesus is and what he has done for you. Okay, when you really understand that and have a repentful heart to him, things begin to happen. Well, when I looked at uh, Acts chapter 3, I'm, I'm through with that text. I'm through with Second Kings right now, chapter 23, uh, as Josiah talked about a revival for the people of God. But I saw a text in uh, the New Testament, uh, Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3 is, is kind of an offshoot from, in, in, my, in my estimated uh, uh, spiritual thinking, okay, some call it sanctified imagination, uh, that uh, Acts chapter 3, the Bible gives a narrative of a lame man sitting by a gate called Beautiful Begging Arms. Here again, some of you will be familiar with that text. Peter and John were on their way to prayer meeting when they discovered this man begging. And the Bible declares that Peter told the man, silver and gold uh, have I not, but such that I do have, he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The Bible declares when the man had received, pardon me, strength in his ankle bones, he leaped up, stood up, started walking, and began to praise God. The man experienced a rekindled passion and called, that caused him to enter into the temple uh, to worship God and to praise God. He was leaping, the Bible says, just... just just, just enjoying Jesus, if I might put it that way. Enjoying what Jesus had done in terms of setting him free. That man was bound, 
okay? And if we were in sin, understand that we were in sin prior to God saving us, then and, and then the Spirit comes and sets us free, oh my God, we should be leaping and praising God just as this man does. But as long as we think that we're doing it ourselves and we're not all that bad and, you know, uh, God, God, God ought to be thankful that I'm serving. As long as you've got that attitude, you'll never experience all that God has for you. So my question to you today, what are you going to do? Are you going to commit yourself to God who is able to bless you beyond uh, your imagination? Are you going to rekindle your relationship with God you know, uh, have a renewed relationship because you repent of a wayward lifestyle. A lifestyle is really not what God wanted you to be doing in the first place, but you just followed the, the, the you know, the popular uh, behavior, followed the move of man as opposed to the move of God and the word of God. Or are you going to continue to walk outside of his will are you going to really rekindle a right relationship with him? Well, if you're willing, hey, son, if you're willing, go Josiah. <laughs> if you're willing to commit to God, God is willing to commit to you. And after Josiah realized that Israel was on the wrong track, he called for a day of national repentance and, 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 and to restore true worship in Judah. And, you know, uh, I don't know whether New Sardis members, New Sardis church family has been doing it, but we declared going into this pandemic uh, a day of fasting. Every Wednesday was to be a day of, repast, of, of fasting and a renewal of our commitment to God and the things of God. Don't know whether you've been doing it or not, but I hope and trust that you have, and that if you haven't been doing it, you will uh, begin to do it, okay? As a means of a, re a revival, as a means of returning back to God, as a means of uh, 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 positioning ourselves, where God would have us be in terms of serving him. As long as there is breath in our bodies, the opportunity is there for us to be right with God. And I hope and I pray, God knows I pray, that uh, when this thing is over, we'll see a new uh, commitment to God a passion to serve God, to serve him according to his word, a passion to pray, a passion to do the work of, of evangelism, uh, a, a, a determination to, to take communion on a regular basis. I just trust that there will be revival in the church when we return. Amen? Amen. All right. God bless you. God bless you again. Apologize for coming on a little late, but uh, we were we are trying a new system. I guess you can notice the background is a little bit different, okay, than it has been. All right. Matter of fact, uh, we still didn't have it quite right. <laughs> ah, you're looking at the ceiling. I think <laughs> most of you may be looking at the ceiling, but that wasn't what we had hoped to have happen. But we'll get it straight. God says the same. Going forward, we'll get it straight. Good evening, Sister Allen. Good evening, Pat Blake. God bless you. Uh, Pat, you've been a faithful soul from day one. Hey, I've been keeping up with those of you that's been coming on the broadcast uh, on the virtual streaming on a regular basis. I've been keeping up with you. Amen. Just like you have my record of teaching and preaching in the Word, I have the record of those of you that's been coming on. And so I praise God for you. I truly do. I truly, truly do. All right. All right.
Thank you, Sister Blake. God bless you. Can't go back to being the same. Amen. Not after this experience. We've got to have revival in the land. We really do. And where does re revival start? Hey, Sister Gladys, revival starts in us as individuals. Amen. Before we even get to the New Sardis Church family as a whole, revival is going to restart in us as individuals. We, when we go back, we ought to go back taking somebody with us. Amen to church. Amen. When the church a building is open, we ought to go back. This is what I've been doing during the pandemic. Okay, and I've got somebody I want to bring back to the house of the Lord. God bless you, Sister Miles. Hope that thing works out for you. Amen. Amen. Well, one thing this does, uh, uh, this new system I've got trying to get set up, it's allowing me to see those of you that's coming on. I can see you clearly. I'm up close to you. <laughs> I don't know how much close you are to me. Hey, Carrie, <laughs> God bless you. I don't know how close you are to me, but uh, I'm much closer to you uh, uh, with the way we've set up now. So hopefully this will be a help to us going forward. All right. Anyone out there that doesn't know Christ and the free pardon of their sin, never accepted him as personal Savior, you've never acknowledged him publicly to someone that you have received Jesus as Savior, listen, you can do that. You can do that. Call the number that will be on the screen right after we finish. Uh, there's a text. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not text, but that. Well, yeah, you can text to the phone number that's up there. There's some person's name that's up there. The church's number is up there. Give us a call. We're waiting to hear from you if you want to receive Christ or if you want to unite with the New Sardis Church family. Feel free. Free. Yes, feel free. Feel free. We would love to have you to be a part of the New Sardis Church Fellowship. 